What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your host with the most, Avery LR32, here bringing you guys a video discussing something about the Yu Gi Oh! game as a whole. I don't want to talk about the demand list. I don't want to talk about discussions and theories and all this other crap that's been going on. I want to discuss something that's been on my mind since uh, the last Yu Gi Oh! regional that I went to here uh, in, well, I shouldn't say here in Kissimmee. I don't live there, but you know what I mean. In Kissimmee, Florida. And it was the fact of, it really hit me, that the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! has changed a lot. Now, I'm not just talking about the fact that the game has had many different mechanics and has been completely power creeped years over years, but I want to discuss how did all this happen, where did all of this even come from. So let's just go ahead and just dive right into it. Now, I played Trains at this um, regional here in Kissimmee last week. Um... And I just, you know, I ended up scrubbing out. I went 2-4, dropped, and I just, you know, I started off pretty well. I played against Salaman great. It was a good matchup for me. And then I started going against decks like these. Not the Endemion deck, of course, but I'm talking about like a Pendulum deck. I went against a Pendulum deck. He completely vomited on the board. And I couldn't help but just sit there and think, what has happened to the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! over the past few years that has made this game become a... For the most part, depending on the deck that you're playing, a break my board scenario. You know, you look at the Endemion deck here that I was just now testing, actually, and I tested a hand where I went second, and I was able to make a board of Endemion. I popped four cards. I had Empress on the board. I had Servant of Endemion in my pendulum zone i had a uh, supreme king gate zero in my pendulum zone i had a jackal king up like i had the nuts and caboodle and did i mention that i also had a field spell like <laughs> i just named off about like what six seven cards let's count here one two three four five six that was six cards on my board Four of which were in the main monster zone, two were in the pendulum zone. Uh, so it was actually seven, I'm sorry, because I had my, my scale set up. So seven cards on my first turn, whereas you compare it to something like, let me see if I can find it here. You compare it to something like da -da 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 top 32 YCS Austin deck profile, and this deck was a hero deck that topped YCS Austin in Texas. Uh, and I made this video March 24th, 2013, so just over six years old. And, I mean, just look at the cards that are in this deck. It might be kind of hard to see here. Let me see if I can't zoom in. Okay, I, so I can zoom in on the screen. The guy's playing Stratos, Neos Alias, one copy of Honest, Duality, was it two? Dimensional Prison was so broken back in this time. Like, I remember D Prisons were like 20 to $30 for supers that only came out of a DS game. You could only get super rares out of a DS game. Photon Thrasher, Gores was so broken, and cards like Gores and even Mirror Force have trained the Yu-Gi-Oh! players to completely play the game in a different way, all because of one card. And we're not even seeing that in the game anymore. Granted, we're seeing that now with hand traps, how you have to kind of be more careful and play around cards and things like that. But I also feel that with all these changes, I almost feel like I've decreased um, of how good of a player I am. I was just watching one of my old videos, just kind of reminiscing about the stuff I used to post here on YouTube. And it was a video from seven years ago where I went to a regional in Tallahassee, and I remember this regional, but I couldn't remember the place that I came in. I actually mentioned in my video that I came in 32nd place, so I just got into top 32, but because it was like a 75-man regional or something like that, it was like top 24 cutoff, so I almost topped, and I remember thinking like, man, Tallahassee is really easy. Granted, smaller town regionals are going to be easier, and the smaller the regional, the tougher it is to top, but it's going to going to probably be easier competition. I came in top 32 at that event, and like, I look back on that now, and I'm like, why can't I do that now? Like, the last top that I got, I went X and 2 with Trickstar when they first came out back in Zoot, back near at the end of Zodiac format. I went 7 wins and 2 losses in Kissimmee, and I got my invite. I believe I got top 16. Yeah, top 16, because I still have that deck profile up on my channel. And then I also got, like, top 24 with Cosmo, like, a year before that or something like that. And the point that I'm trying to make with this is that 
over time, these decks have evolved and gotten better and better and better. We see the new game mechanics, especially pendulums, which I feel pendulums have just completely exploded the game out of proportion when it comes to speed. I mean, granted, Link Monsters have also made the game faster in a sense because of the presence that they themselves have on the board and open up your main monster zones. But then you look at these other decks that come out, like Sky Striker and Salamangrate, that can't necessarily OTK, that are more a control-based strategy, but yet the combos that they do are still leaps and bounds beyond what even the Artifact Trap Trick um, hand deck could do, or for those of you veteran players know it as the Hat deck. You know, back in that format, which was in 2013, right before Dragon Rulers came out, the most that a Hat deck would do is maybe you set like a, a Fire or Ice hand and set two or three back row and pass, and the reason why it was a Tier 1 deck before Dragon Rulers came in and completely blew the doors open on that format and on that meta was because of the fact that that's the time, that was the setting that the game was in. It was so much more difficult to blow through three back row and to deal with a fire or ice hand that was you know, a self-replacing card like, say, a Mystic Tomato or a Nimble Momonga or insert any sort of self-replacing card here, that it was such a broken deck. It literally was a good shit dot deck because the artifacts had just came out. You could throw in the artifacts, make it a stun-based strategy. Didn't You cut off the opponent from their extra deck, just like what we're seeing now, even in some Salaman Great builds that are playing the artifact engine, we're seeing people still use that concept to this day. So it's almost as if we're right now in a time where concepts of the past are coming back into the forefront. However, at the same time, we keep on getting more and more powerful cards. Just the scale, no pun intended with pendulum scales, keeps on getting higher and higher and higher. Who would have thought eight years ago or nine years ago, however long it was when we got the original Endemion effect monster, that we would get an Endemion Supreme Sorcerer, basically Doctor Strange, for those of you Avenger Endgames fans, and we it would be a pendulum monster. Who would ever thought that a pendulum monster would ever be a thing in this game, or even know what a pendulum was? And it has an effect where you remove six counters from anywhere on your field, you special summon it, and you pop as many cards on the field equal to the number of cards on your side of the field that you can place a spell counter on. So, if you have five monsters that can all be, have a spell counter placed on them, plus two scales and a, a field spell, in this case Magical Citadel, um, plus, like, let's just say, for argument's sake, you have three other spells that are face up that you can place a counter on, you're popping, like, what, 11 cards? Like, who would have thought that one card could have the ceiling to pop 11 cards, to pop all those cards on the field, and then to get as many counters on itself of number of cards that it's popped? Like, just look at the wall of text. I mean, I understand it's a pendulum monster, but just look at the text on this card. Pause the video and read it if you need to, but just look at this text between the pendulum and the effect monster effect and then you've got all these weird rulings between, you know, oh, well, it activated its pendulum effect, and so it pops, and, like, this is what happened with me whenever I played against the pendulum guy at the regional. He had Purple Poison uh, Magician on the field. I attacked into one of his monsters with my giant Juggernaut Leap Train. He used Purple Poison's effect to increase its attack by 1,200. That was its pendulum effect, but, oh, it just went to the graveyard, so now you get to use Purple Poison's monster effect to pop one of my monsters because it was destroyed by a card effect, and it's like... It's these intricacies and in plays that we've never seen in the game before until we finally hit something like even Pendulum era of Yu-Gi-Oh! or Link era of Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, who would have thought that Konami would think it was a bright idea to release something like Saryuja Skull Dread, that's basically a Graceful Charity, like, let's be honest here, and it doesn't even have the uh, drawback of Graceful Charity where you have to discard the cards of the graveyard, you get to put them back in your deck, oh, they go to the bottom of the deck, I don't see that as a drawback, especially with how much decks draw and search now, we're at the point now where we're willing to banish 10 cards on the top of our deck face down to draw 2 cards, like, we have entered into such an insane era of Yu-Gi-Oh that... I almost don't even recognize the game anymore. That doesn't mean that I don't enjoy it. I still have times where I enjoyed this game. However, there are times like after this past regional where I went two wins and four losses where I was just really pissed off and aggravated, uh, not even at the new tournament policy and rule sets and crap like that, but just the fact of where the game has, has come to, where it has come from and is at right now. And it's at times like that where I really question myself, like, do I still enjoy playing this game? Then whenever a new balance comes out and I get hyped and I get excited and and then I start playing decks like Endemion, Sorcerer, or whatever it is you want to call this deck, and learning the intricacies and combos of the deck that I still feel like I do enjoy this game thoroughly. However, it is also at times like this where I just sometimes take a minute to step back and think, you know, 
this game is not what it used to be, and I don't think it really will ever get back to that point. You know, if, if we want to go back into those times where, you know, you would summon a monster, set a couple background paths, you're better off playing, you know, retro format, you know, using GOAT um, 2005 format or using 2012 to 2013 hat format, which even then some people didn't even enjoy that format. However, a lot of people here in Jacksonville related it to the GOAT format. And looking back on it, hindsight being 2020, I can see why that format was a good format to compare to GOAT format. I personally enjoy GOAT format because of all the old cards that were in that set. I still play it from time to time to this day because playing formats like that do make you a better player. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Am I just sort of maybe blowing smoke out of my ears, conspiracy theory tinfoil hat that may maybe I'm just I'm missing something here? Let me know what you guys think about, you know, how the evolution of Yu-Gi-Oh has come to be. I'm really interested to kind of hear what the community has to say about this, which is the whole changing of the game. And it's not that I'm, I'm a salty player, like, oh, I want to go back to the old days of Yu-Gi-Oh. It has nothing to do with that. You know, I've been playing this game. I remember when I first heard about this game, I was in Miami in a hotel when I was like five years old, and the anime came on. Me and my dad started watching it. We fell in love with the game. Before I knew it, I was eight years old, and like my friends were playing, and I got into it that way. And then from that point on, uh, when I turned 12 was when I went to my first locals, and I've been playing pretty much competitively since 2008. So I've lived through a lot of crazy formats, especially when your first format's Teledad. That will really ring your asshole in a few ways, if you know what I mean. So, please let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to hear some response videos or even some comments on this. I want to see if I can kind of get some discussions going in the community. Thank you guys for watching, and subscribe if you have not already.